we live in interesting times we have a geopolitical churn going on we are moving from a unipolar world to a multipolar world where india is going to be one of the strong poles we are also in an era where several disruptive technologies have emerged which are having a disproportionate effect on military capabilities we are also in an era where technological changes are so rapid that if you don't keep pace you are going to be outdated by the time you decide and develop those technologies which are required so if we have to meet these emerging challenges we have to look at different models or a model which is different than what we were employing if you look at what has been happening in the country we had a fairly siloized system where we had drdo doing r&d our industry doing mostly production academia doing their own r&d whether that was relevant to our needs or not and more or less the outcome till recent years was we were a major importer of weapon systems 60 to 70% of our wep weapon system sensors platforms used to be imported this is changing and i'm glad to say that last year i think more than 90% of all orders that were placed were for indigenous systems if you have to win the battles of the future we have to transition to indigenous systems and indigenous capabilities because if your dependence is there on foreign systems you will not get the desired support during a conflict and if you look at the example of the russia ukraine conflict what works today does not work in 15 20 days that's the kind of rapid changes which are happening both in offensive and defensive systems so you need inherent capabilities if you have to address the challenges of future battlefields so the first thing we need to do if you look at today our r&d budget we spend about 5.5% of our defense budget on defense r&d if you look at countries such as china us they spend between 10 to 15% of their defense budget on r&d so the first change which we need to do if we have to be competitive going ahead is to increase our defense r&d budget and i'm glad to inform all of you that honorable raksha mantri ji has promised us that over the next 5 years we will move from 5% to 10% but if you see the way technologies are evolving it is not going to be enough just to do defense r&d as a nation we have to improve our r&d capabilities and spending because in lot of these technologies the civilian sector actually is ahead of defense if you look at ai communication semiconductors in all these critical technologies the civilian sector is far ahead of the military sector so we have to increase the spending on civilian r&d too today we as a nation we spend 0.67% of our gdp on r&d countries like china us spend 2.5% of their gdp and they have a bigger gdp than us 
countries such as South Korea, Israel spend more than 4% of their GDP on R&D. So that is another area where we have to seriously look at if we have to compete in the future. And there I request if there are anybody here from the private sector. The private sector has to look at increasing their R&D spend. Today, of this 0.67% that we spend, 70% of that is spent by the government. The private sector spends only 30% on this overall 0.67%. So that has to increase significantly. It has happened to a some extent in the pharmaceutical sector, but it has to happen in all the sectors if the country has to remain competitive going ahead. So that's the second thing which we need to do. The third thing which we need to do, as I said earlier, we have to break the silos. We have compartmentalized ourselves too much. We have to see how we can work seamlessly across organizations. We have to see how we can best utilize all the resources that are available in the country for our needs. This siloization results in far less optimal use of the resources that we have. Of course, there are organizational barriers, there are issues of IP, there are issues which we have to overcome when we need to do this. But I think we have no choice. We have to find mechanisms so that this siloization is broken down. And I think it has started happening and I'm sanguine that over the next few years this will increase dramatically. So from these broad points, let me now tell you what we are doing in DRDO. So in DRDO, we are aware of these challenges and this year being the year of reforms in the MOD, we have tried to implement some of the reforms so that the issues that I mentioned are overcome. So the first thing that we have done is that any system development we do which is on mission mode basis, that is based on an AON from any of the services. We have now decided that we will have two industry partners, which we know, which we call them as development come production partners. We had started this process of DCPP in 2018, 2019. We were mostly having one partner, but now in the interest of the technology absorption increasing as well as the services having a choice between two partners so that the cost also is kept in control. We have now decided that for all our system development projects, we will have two DCPPs. And these two DCPPs are chosen purely on a competitive basis and we don't distinguish between the private sector and the public sector. Everyone has the equal opportunity and it's only on the commercial basis that we do selection. Of course, once the technical criteria are satisfied by the industries. So by this, we hope that this technology transfer process, which used to take time, because once the development process is over, then you, we used to handhold industry for the TOT, which would then result in delay in induction, would be avoided. Because if the industry works with us right from the start of the project, they would absorb the design better, they would absorb the technology better, and then any upgrades that would be required, any incremental improvements in the system that would be required, 
could be handled by the industry themselves. This would free up DRDO scientists who are otherwise locked in to support that system over the entire life cycle of the product, free to look at newer technologies. So this is the first thing that we have ensured. We have also opened up all our IP to private sector and public sector. So whoever wants to take our IP can take it, build upon it and deliver newer products. So we have freed that up. Again, we hope this way the industry will also be energized to take up further development on existing IP. We have also now, we had a mechanism called Technology Development Fund, which was being used to fund R&D in industry. This was mostly initially restricted in its first few years to basically indigenizing components, subsystems in already inducted systems of the services. But we have now broadened it and it can be used to develop cutting edge technologies. We had a committee under the leadership of Dr. Saraswat and Dr. Kakodkar and they have given us a mechanism by which we can fund cutting edge R&D in industry. One of the challenges of funding cutting edge R&D in industry was who will be accountable for the failure. Unlike DARPA in the US which has a mandate from their Senate and Congress where if failures occur also they don't have to answer to the Senate why they have caused loss to the taxpayer. In fact, if you look at only 10 to 15 percent of DARPA projects succeed because they really look at moonshots when it comes to technologies. We don't have such a mechanism in India. The LDO, if he's, our projects fail, we have to answer to CAG, we have to answer to parliament why loss has been caused to the government. But R&D has to be looked at as an investment, not as an expenditure. Because even if a project fails and you fail fast, the lessons that you learn from that R&D can be used in several other places. So this mechanism, hopefully, we are now looking at also a separate chapter for R&D in our GFR. 